And after the fire was out, it took them another hour, hour and a half. Then we got the go ahead to go in. And that was our main mission. Uh, we knew we weren't looking for survivors. Uh, we were looking for bodies. And we found them. What do you remember um, about, did you have to go into the houses? Yeah, we had to go into the houses. Uh, one of the things that sticks out in my mind, and I don't want to be too graphic out of respect for the people that were there, but it was a, a headless arms, legs, nothing except torso. And I wasn't even supposed to pick it up. There was another two medics that were going to pick it up and put it into a bag. But the chest cavity broke apart. And the smell got to him. And he got so sick he couldn't, couldn't do it. And then I was ordered to do it. And we put it into a bag. It, uh, it had fallen on a, on a bush right by the corner of, of the house. And it was impaled with sticks and all the stems that were coming up. And uh, the backside, the part that was on the ground was the back because the clothes were not burned. And uh, it was a crewman because of the color of the, uh, being in the service. I knew what the flight suits looked like. Uh, because we process medical exams and stuff on on the airmen, and they would always come in in their flight suit. And we did that, and then it was just a matter of spreading out and going under some houses. Uh, they had crawl spaces. We had to look everywhere for body parts. And I don't know if there's a better word I could use. I, no, I'm, I fine. don't want it to be so unsensitive for the, the survivors of that. And so I just, it changed me forever. Uh, I know it took years for me to even be able to eat a piece of meat. I couldn't do it. it uh, the smell of that much carnage was was too much for me, yeah. and it, it affects me to this day, but I'm getting, getting over it.